All right, guys, this time we'll take a look on how to create persistent volume claims. And with those claims, we'll basically reserve space uh, in our system and we'll use them to store database data. I've chosen the MySQL. And next we'll create one temporary pod and we'll try to access the MySQL pod. All right, so this is the persistent volume claim. So actually, first we are creating a persistent volume on the system and it has a name MySQL PV volume. We say that we would like to reserve 100 uh, megabytes uh, for the storage area of MySQL. Uh, this uh, space, it will be reserved in uh, mount uh, data directory. And then we create a persistent volume claim. So we say, okay, if in the, our system there is such space, uh, please we would like to reserve it and to use it. So basically right now, if I apply this uh, MySQL PV uh, YAML file, I should see kubectl get uh, pvc. Our persistent volume is created and our MySQL persistent volume claim is bound to this uh, space and the capacity is 100 megabytes. Okay, that's where we will store our information from the MySQL database. And now let's see the MySQL deployment. We see that we have one service which is exposing the deployment. We are exposing a deployment with a selector app MySQL on port 3306. And we're looking for such deployment with uh, selector app equals to MySQL. We see that this is our uh, deployment actually. It has the same label. So for the deployment, what's interesting is that we are pulling from internet the MySQL image and we are setting a root password for this image. I advise you if you are doing this uh, for production purposes, uh, to use uh, secrets which will not allow uh, to store the passwords uh, in such uh, plain text files available for uh, the administrator to peek uh, around. Then we are exposing the same port out of uh, our container. So this happens within the container. The interesting part is uh, those two sections here. So basically we are creating one volume with the name of MySQL persistent storage which will be used inside of the container. And for this volume, we are using already created a persistent volume claim, which is MySQL PV claim. Since MySQL PV claim is bound to MySQL PV volume, we're actually connecting this volume with the reserve space of 100 megabytes on our drive. It's a little bit uh, confusing why so many connections we are making, but uh, in real uh, world, we can have uh, a lot of hard drives and a lot of capacity on different machines. That's why we are creating uh, volume claims in order to reserve uh, the best possible space according to uh, Kubernetes. Once we have created this volume with the name of MySQL Persistent Storage, we will mount this volume and we will mount it inside of the container, inside of the directory varlib MySQL. Uh, so basically we are saying, okay, the MySQL image will load up to, within the MySQL server and for its default storage data, which is inside of varlib MySQL, to use our persistent uh, storage. And now, if we type uh, microcate as uh, kubectl get all, all namespaces, and we have applied the previous configuration, we'll see that uh, our MySQL pod is running, and we can describe uh, this pod. And uh, as you can see, the port 3306 is exposed. We're using the MySQL 8.0 image pulled from internet. We've set the root password. If we have used the secrets, this uh, field will not be displayed to the administrator, but this is just another topic. And under the mounts, we see that we have mounted varlib MySQL. This means that the container will use our MySQL persistent storage for its data, and it's mounted with read write access. Also, we see that our volume is actually a um, persistent volume claim. And uh, here from the log, we see that uh, the container is started successfully. Actually, if we describe once again our persistent uh, volume claims, we can grab this MySQL PV claim and describe it. And of course, it has to be of type uh, PVC. And we can see again uh, information about our claim and uh, we also see that it has been mounted by our pod 
Okay, the next step is to access uh, our uh, MySQL uh, pod via another um, pod. In order to enable the communication between the different pods, I've enabled the DNS add-on here. You can do so with uh, micro KTS enable uh, DNS. And also you can enable the packet forwarding in IP tables with uh, this uh, line. All right, how to connect to this MySQL pod? Uh, it has to be exposed as a service, as we created this service. So we'll type a micro KTS uh, kubectl get uh, services, and this will show us the name of the service which is uh, exposing our MySQL uh, pod, and the name is uh, MySQL. And now I'll paste one long line, which will actually create one temporary uh, container and uh, with the image of MySQL, with the name of MySQL client. And inside of uh, this temporary container, it will run the following commands. Actually, we would like to run the MySQL client specifying as a host the name of our service, MySQL. So with this parameter, minus H, MySQL, we are specifying that a temporary pod should uh, uh, connect to the previous uh, MySQL pod using password as a password. And let's execute this uh, command. And we see that we are inside of MySQL. Uh, so we can uh, type uh, show databases Inside, we can see the tables and uh, actually we can see our user table. So that's how you connect uh, basically uh, to the exposed uh, service by using its uh, name. And now if we exit from this pod, um, the temporary pod and container will be destroyed and we can normally work within our uh, cluster. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you found the information interesting, you can subscribe to the channel.